Now let's talk about what we mean by call print even and call print odd. We're calling functions. We're calling functions that we have defined up above the main part of our script here. Now functions may require arguments to run. You can see this in the bash syntax through the expansion of argument number one here in print even and print odd and over here in Python where in the definition of the function we specify that we are looking for one argument called x and x is used to fill in the value in this string. The string is printed by echo in bash. It's printed by print in Python. And each language has its own way of specifying what should be put into the string depending on the value stored at x. So how do we know what x is? How do we know what value is going to be printed at this point in the string? Well, let's trace it back. x in the print statement comes from x as an argument in the signature of the function. And x here is what happened to i down here. When we pass the values stored at i as an argument to print even, we're now using that value stored in a local variable called x inside the function print even. So the x here gets its value from the value stored at i when print even is called. This is the same i whose value was evaluated in the modulo evaluation, and the same i to which the user's input was stored. So the value here, if we trace it all the way back, is what the user originally input. Same thing with print odd. The same thing is happening in the bash script, even though the syntax is different. This argument expansion inside print even, it's expanding the first argument given to print even. So let's come down here to the code. The first argument given to print even is the value stored at the variable i. The same i that was evaluated in the modulo, and the same i to which the user input was stored. So once again, this variable expansion will evaluate to the same thing as this variable expansion, the variable which received its value in the read statement from the user input. Now, we could rewrite these scripts so that there are no function calls. We could, for example, replace the call to print even after the if statement with this line right here, with echo, the number is even. Although we wouldn't be using dollar sign one, we would be using dollar sign i inside the string to be printed. So you can think of the function call as a continuation of the main code. And in fact, the scripts 
both the Bash script and the Python script, are short enough that it would probably be just as efficient to write the code that way. However, we're illustrating a larger point here, and that is it's good programming practice to break your larger task into smaller subtasks, and functions allow you to do that. So, functions can be helpful, for example, if you're going to be using the same few lines of code or the same part of an algorithm over and over again, instead of writing out that code over and over again, you could simply call a function that does that same bit of code. In that same way, functions can help to make your code more readable, that is, human readable. If we have smaller subtasks set apart from the larger task, and we know what that subtask does, then we're freed up to read the main part of the code and just think to ourselves about what print even does every time we read it. One last question about our function calls here. You'll notice that the main part of the code starts below the function definitions. Why do you think that is? Why do you think these functions have to be defined before the main part of the code? Well, if they're not defined before the main part of the code, then we reach print even, and the bash script or the Python script is not sure what to do. It doesn't recognize that. And so it's important to define these functions first just like it's important to define a variable before you use it, before you reference it or expand it. So in summary, even across different languages, Bash or Python, no matter what you're programming in, there are some good practices to creating programs that apply anywhere. So one of those good practices is splitting up your larger task into smaller subtasks, especially when those subtasks are going to be repeated over and over. Functions are an ideal way to help you do just that. Define the smaller subtasks first and then use those subtasks in the main part of your code.